Hello, we are glad to have you back. We have now come to the last standard communication in this chapter, the USB. USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. How is it different from UART or CAN, which we have discussed so far? Welcome back, everyone. Balaf, this is a great question. Unlike the other forms of communication we have presented so far, the USB protocol not only defines the physical and data link layers of communication, but also everything is specified about supplying power, in addition to the full specification of connectors and cables. Okay, but why was that necessary? As with most standards, a group of companies got fed up with all the different connectors and wanted to create one universally applicable one. If you look around, this has been somewhat successful as many of our devices use USB. Palash, can you give us some examples? Of course. Here is this laptop with four USB ports. You could connect a wired mouse, an extra keyboard, or even a data storage device. Exactly. As we have seen before, USB is so widespread that we connect everything to our computers almost exclusively via USB connectors, including our devices that communicate via UART or CAN. Wait a minute, Adam. The four USB ports on the laptop are not the same. Wasn't it supposed to be a universal connector? Yes, it was. However, technology is constantly evolving. And this has put increasing demands on the USB standard. The first USB connector came out in 1996 with two versions capable of 1.5 and 12 megabits per second speeds. In comparison, USB 4 and USB 4 2.0 devices came out in 2019 and 2022 respectively. These were now capable of 40 and 80 gigabits per second respectively, as we have devices that require such fast data transfer. This is interesting, but how does the computer know how to communicate with the USB device? Each USB device has a vendor ID and a product ID, which can be retrieved from each USB device in a predefined way by the computer when connected. Based on these parameters, the computer can determine which driver to use for the communication to work correctly. These IDs can be requested by members of the USB IF, which is short for USB Implementers Forum, and are absolutely necessary for the devices to work. This is a non-profit organization whose main activity is to promote USB. I see. Then, we know that there are several types of supported speeds and how the computer can distinguish between the devices. However, we haven't talked much about the different USB standards. So let's go through them one by one. The first USB 1.0 standard introduced two types of connectors, Type A and Type B, and the second revision introduced Mini A and Mini B connectors. Here comes another reason why there are more than one type of connector. The USB master-slave communication and the connector types refer to the types. This is why computers are equipped with USB Type-A connectors and printers with USB Type-B connectors, because this way it is not possible to accidentally connect two hosts or masters, for example, computers or laptops. The now well-known Micro-B and the less well-known Mini-AB and Micro-AB were launched in 2007 together with OTG, that is on the go. USB 3.0 introduced two completely new connectors, also known as Type A and Type B, usually recognizable by their blue color. The micro line has been extended with a design called Micro B Super Speed, most commonly seen on external hard drives. The mini and micro size connectors have declined over the years with the introduction of the USB Type C connector in 2014. Would it be possible for USB-C to become universal eventually? Hope is still alive, but USB-C is just a connector design. As you can see from the figure, USB-C connectors can be used with USB 2.0 and all types of USB 3 and USB 4 devices. So, the connector itself does not guarantee that all functions are supported. It depends on how the technology develops and whether additional USB connectors will be needed. For example, the speed of communication and the power requirements of the connected devices have increased. Even the USB 1.0 connectors included ground and power lines, although at that time the cables and connectors were rated for different currents. The specified voltage before the USB power delivery standard was 5 volts with a 5% tolerance. 
Each low power and not yet initialized high power device in the system can consume up to one unit of power. In normal operation, high power devices can consume a minimum of one and a maximum of five units. Before USB 3.0, one unit was 100 milliampere and afterwards 150 milliamps. For battery charging, a separate specification, aptly named battery charging, can be applied with a maximum consumption of 5 amperes. As we approach the summer of 2012, the power delivery standard has been introduced and with it higher voltage levels. The new technology could power 5, 12 and 20 volt systems. This was later supplemented by a 9 volt option in the second edition. When writing the curriculum in 2021, the maximum power that could be delivered was 100 watts, or more precisely, 20 volts at a maximum of 5 amps via a dedicated USB cable. While in 2024, the same increased to 240 watts, 48 volts, and 5 amps. 240 watts sounds relatively high. What devices might need that? It's mainly high performance laptops and external video cars that require this much power. This power level also opens the way for other alternative applications such as charging electric scooters. I will not go into the data link layer of the standard in detail. It's worth knowing, however, that it is a bus type channel on which, according to the general standard, one host and up to 127 devices can be located. The protocol has a multi-level start topology and all communication is initiated by the host device. Hubs can be used to connect multiple devices, in which case all communication from devices under the hub passes through the hub. I believe there is a way to identify the various devices. Exactly! Each device has a device class ID, which determines which driver the host should use to interpret the data. When a device is connected to a host, the ID is sent out and the host decides what is the serving priority of the device. This process is called enumeration. We've talked about power supply, connector types and communication speed. But we haven't discussed communication itself. What does the communication itself look like with the USB standard? The communication is done on a differential signal pair. Here too, communication happens in frames but here the time length of the frames is capped at one millisecond. In a frame, not only one packet of data is transmitted, but the time between the beginning and the end of the frame is divided according to priority. The host allocates a time window to each device, which may or may not be filled. Another interesting point is that USB devices can be only hosts or only devices, but USB on the go, abbreviated as OTG, in 2007 specified the possibility for devices to swap roles in the same system. This allows you to connect many different devices via USB ports. Yes, but some devices can be a bit tricky. That's because a physical device from the system's viewpoint can be multiple separate entities with different tasks connected by a hidden hub. A perfect example of this is a webcam with a microphone where the audio and video can be handled separately by your computer. These devices are called compound devices. That's why USB is called universal, because you can use many different devices with the same connector. I use it for many things too. I often connect the wireless mouse and keyboard adapter and the flash drive to my computer. However, if I think about it, I probably use it most often to charge my phone and laptop. I find the USB amazing. Here's my phone, for example. If I connect it to my computer, it works as a device and I can access the files on it on the computer. However, if I plug in a USB dock, it acts as a host. I can plug in a mouse, a flash drive and a memory card, charge my phone, give it a stable internet connection via Ethernet, and even connect two external displays simultaneously. And all this is via a single USB port. Well, it's really amazing. Let's take a look at an example in the following video. I am looking forward to seeing how we will use USB with our microcontroller. Stay tuned, and we'll show you how to use the development board as a mouse. See, See you! you.